when we are dealing with, so I'm going to first create a problem and then solve the problem using that teaching the next topic. So that's what we are going to do. What we are going to do. It's not actually a problem. It's something that uh, people are not comfortable with. When we are dealing with, when we are dealing with C strings in C language, what are our main concerns? What is a major thing that, like when you're, first of all, what is a C string? Anybody knows what is a C string? Character array with no by in the end. A character array with no by at the end. Couldn't be better. Perfect. Or null terminated array of, array of characters. Perfectly correct. So, null terminated array of characters, which means to show the end of data, I have to put, first of all, we know what arrays are. Arrays of characters, we put A, B, W, X, Y, B, Z, 2, 3, 4 in it, okay? Now, when we want to actually end the data, because we don't know what is the size of each string, it varies a lot. Depending on what you're doing, you're dealing with uh, somebody's name. Somebody's name is Joe, and somebody's name like me is Soli Manlu. So big, small. Because of that fact, you always have to measure the size of your array from, uh, with which you want, in which you want to hold your string. The biggest thing that you can imagine, so you can read in it and mark the end with a null. So if it's Joe, you put J-O-E and you put a null at the end. If it's Fardad, you put F-A-R-D-A-D -A -D and you put a null at the end. And this standard is followed by all programmers. This is actually comes with the C library as a standard, which all string header file, all string library functions follow this standard, which means if you even go to printf and put percent %s, that's essentially what printf does. Printf actually goes, prints the characters one by one, keeps going until it hits the null. If you forget to put the null, that's when you're going to see garbage is going to appear. It's going to keep printing everything in your memory until it hits the null, somewhere null in the memory. So that's our standard, the standard that array of characters, or what we call C strings, follow to uh, keep some kind of a text. So what are the major concerns with this? Like what really concerns us when we are dealing with this? What makes us worry? Anybody like, like when you are actually dealing with this, what is painful when you're thinking about it? Anybody? Like when you're working with character strings, do you think like uh, anybody has any? Only when you're writing a program you don't know what kind of string, you don't know how long the string is that someone's going to enter, but you have some idea of how long it should be. Therefore, you always have to waste memory. So if I want to have 50 names, I have to say, okay, the longest name possible is 50, uh, 60 characters. So I have to put 50 multiplied by 60 plus one characters to be able to hold. And we know that 90% of the names are like Joe's and Jack's and Lee's, right? So we are losing lots of memory. So, and also, passing these things around is very difficult. Every single time you want to find out what is the length of some person, length of the name of some person, you have to keep counting, one, two, three, four, five, six, get to the end. The SDR len function that you are using doesn't do magic. It's simply a loop, going from the beginning of something, going to the, like, just one by one counting and find, finding out where it hits the end and so on and so forth. So, because of that, we want to use the encapsulation power of object orientation and get rid of that. Try to make something that acts like a variable, like an integer. When you write an integer, do you worry that what's going to happen with an integer? If I put three, it's going to be not big enough, or three million? How come it works with everything? You don't worry about it, right? We want to have something like that, something not to worry about. And we have enough knowledge to do so, and we're going to add to our knowledge to see how it's actually going to work out. So. To do that, I'm going to create a class, and I'm going to call it a string. It's not a C string. I'm just calling it a string, OK? And I created a module for it already. So string.h, string.cpp, I created the safeguards over here. 
and I created uh, the CPP file for it, and I created the main platform to start working on it and testing and see how it works. So if I want to actually, first of all, I want to have a string, so that's not a, like, uh, rocket science over there. I just have to say over here, a class, string. So that's going to be the class string that is going to encapsulate everything, okay? When we are dealing, so I want to do all the dirty work that you have to always do inside the string and hide it from the user. In our case, user is another programmer. It's not the user sitting behind, the, uh, behind your application and doing accounting. It's another programmer who wants to write a program using a string and hates uh, C style strings and characters and wants to just comfortably work with it, right? For that person, we are actually designing a library for other programmers. So, we want to encapsulate, okay, and have all the dirty work of C done behind the scene using our class. So, what we are going to do, we're going to do all the things that we always do once, and then every time we use the string, string is going to do that for us so I don't have to worry about it anymore. Like you want to compare two strings, what do you do? You do string compare, right? I don't want that. I want to use less than and greater than operator, exactly like any other thing. When you are printing something, like, like when you are actually want to find the length of something, then you have to go through function. I don't want to do that. I want my, my, my string to do all that thing for me comfortably and easily. So let's do it. So, I need to do everything behind the scene, which means I have to create the character array over here for myself. And I hope that you studied dynamic memory allocation, because we're going to do a bunch of it now, okay? Now, what is an array essentially? An array is a pointer pointing to a bunch of memory somewhere, bunch of memory that is of some type. In our case, we have a character string. Character, like, like says, you say string name. So when you want to actually deal with something, let's say like a name, you're going you're gonna to say over here uh, character uh, name, and you say over here 50. When you say 50, it's actually 51. You know that, the null termination thingy, right? So when you do that, what happens? You actually have a pointer called name, and 51 characters, and that pointer is pointing to it, right? The heck with it. I'm not going to do that. I want to have that thing done behind the scene, so I'm just going to create the pointer over here. I'm going to call that pointer, character pointer. I'm going to call it mData. All the variables, all the member variables that I create, I start with m underline, so I can easily search for them to know what are my member variables. Okay? What is that character pointer? This char oh, character pointer. My, my apologies. And also, I think it's a little too small. People at the back, can you see this? Anybody have problem seeing this? No? Okay. So, character pointer, I'm that, I'm, my apologies. So, essentially, I am creating the head of the array without the array itself. Why am I not creating the array? Because I don't know how long it is. <laughs> I'm going to find out, but I don't know now. All right? So, another painful thing that I always have is, what is the length of the string? What is the length of the string? What is the length of the string? Easy. I can encapsulate, right? So, I'm just going to simply put over here an integer. Size. That's going to hold the size of the string at all times. And whenever I want to get it, I'm going to get that value out. I don't know if it's going to be necessary or not, but I'll design as I go. If I want to change it, I'll change it at the end. Again, nothing is written on the stone. I'm just creating it over here. I'm not, one of the good things that I have is that I have a very bad memory, which means every time I'm writing a program, it's a different thing. It's not always the same. Okay, I just come up with it as if I'm doing it now. So, these are the stuff that I don't want people to touch, correct? So, what I want to do, I'm going to put it in private side and I'm going to go public in here, okay? Now, if I want to set a string to a value, what do I do? 
if I want to set a string to a value, I need to get a string from somewhere and put it in here, right? Set this thing to some string without caring what is the size. What do I do? I just, oh yeah, but where? What is the size of the destination? I don't know, right? Because I don't know, first of all, let's do the wish list thingy. I want to have a string. What I'm going to do over here, I'm going to write a function. I'm going to call it set to set the string to whatever I want. So I'm going to call it void set. And in here, I'm going to put a constant character str. So I'm receiving a conventional string, and I'm making a good string out of it. All right? We're gonna, you're going to see how everything's going to get better and better as we go. So if I want to do something like this, if I want to set this, and let's create another thing just to see how things happen, I'm going to create another function to print it. So I'm going to write over here void print, OK? And I'm going to say over here, nothing. That's it. Print. I just want to print. OK? So essentially, uh, I haven't written any code for this, right? No code is written for this, but it's like a prototype that I have. So I come over here. Essentially, this is what I'm going to have. String name. Then I'm going to have, what did I do? Oh, using namespace SDS. Using namespace SDS. OK, so I'm going to create a string name. Now I'm going to say name.set for that. Now I'm going to say name print yourself. Easy. How do we do that? <laughs> OK, how do we do that? Again, this is what another programmer sees. What happens when I actually do set, it's the engine of my string working in the background. I already know dynamic memory allocation and all those stuff, so let's use it and see if we can actually do this. So what do I need to do? I need to come over here and say, OK, let me actually uh, design the set. So I'm going to split the window in two so you can see the header file and the CPP file. So left side, I have the implementation, the CPP file. At right side, I have the header file. This is called a module. OK, so all the information about all the information about a class goes into a header file. All the code and logic behind it goes to the CPP file. We've already done that in workshop one, right? So in here, I'm going to write it. So because I want to implement this set, I have to write this, uh, the, the prototype of the function. So I'm going to write the prototype of the function right over here. So therefore, I'm going to have set. But wait a minute. Who's set? I don't know which set I'm implementing over here. I have to mention which class this set belongs to. And that's why I have to put over here strain scope resolution. For our level of knowledge, again, for our level of knowledge, let me pause this. What's going on here? So essentially, now in here, I have to identify what I want to do in there, right? I am receiving a string. So this set belongs to the string, and scope resolution is like apostrophe S for a class. So remember, whenever you see a scope resolution, at left side, a class is sitting over there. Students always ask, how do I identify what is a scope resolution and what is a dot? In here, you are saying, if you look at the main, if you look at the main in here, you are saying name dot set. In here, you are saying, String scope resolution set. Where do I put dot? Where do I put scope resolution? Scope resolution is to define the logic of a function or do something with the logic of a variable, essentially something that belongs to the design. Dot is when you call a function you have already written with a scope resolution and you want it to run. So essentially, dot means execute. 
Scope resolution means create, means define. Got it? Down to this point. So now that I'm in here, now I'm going to actually create what I wanted to do. So I have a character string uh, um, in here called SDR, and I want to copy that thing into mdata, but mdata doesn't have anything in it. So all I need to do over here is to say mdata is set to new character array, what size? Size of SDR len of SDR plus one people. People tend to forget that, plus one. Okay? That's the most important thing for you to to remember, plus one, okay? Plus one. Anyway, so yeah, so now m data becomes new character strlen of string plus one, right? But remember that, what did we want to do? We, we didn't want people to keep running the strlen to find out what the size is. So instead of doing that, I'm going to say, you see, we, remember we had m size? I'm going to say, I'm going to say two things. I'm going to say m size is set to str len of str first, and then put m size over here. Are we okay with this? All right. So now, like this, I'm actually setting the name to to Fardat, I think it was Fardat. I'm setting the name to Fardat. And to print it, I'm going to come over here and say void print string print. And in here, I'm going to say see out m data. It's very crude, it's very bad, but it's going to get better. I I'm going step by step, okay? So let me have IO stream. See, I'm not doing any includes in here. Do you see IO stream? No. Do you see string header file? No. No include is being done in string header file. This is the golden rule of how to include libraries. Where you use it, you include it. And you don't care how many times it's being included. If you are using it here, include it. Don't include it in a header file say, I want to do it over there so it gets included everywhere. That's the worst thing you can do, okay? You only include when it's needed. So now this thing I have, now I need my IO stream. So uh, include IO stream. And I compile it, it's going to give me probably an, er oh, an error. Yeah, what uh, I did, okay. I made the most stupid mistake. Can somebody tell me what's wrong with this code? I am setting the string to Fardad now because let me just bring it over here. So when I get excited, I do stupid stuff. Now take a look. What's wrong with this? Did I set the string to Fardad? Huh? I made a new one, yeah. Did I set it to Fardat? No, I just occupied enough space for it. I forgot to actually set it to Fardat, okay? I, I created enough space, thank you very much, but what happened to the copying? I have to actually copy into mData the, the string that is supposedly Fardat when it's copied. Now it's done. Do I need to worry? If that string copy is going to overrun the thing, the memory, and corrupt the memory anyway? Not at all. Why? Because I measured the size. I added one for null. It exactly fits what I want to copy, so I do not need to worry about it. Are we okay with this? Yes, sir. I am recording. When it doesn't show paused in here, it means it's recording. Thank you. If you see it's paused, let me know. But good. It was a good call. Sadu. All right. So, it's tea, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it looks like cognac, but no, it's tea. Let me just pour some more. There we go. And that's being recorded, by the way. <laughs> All right. So, 
So I did that. Life is beautiful, right? If I run this program, it's going to probably, when I say probably, is that you never run the thing for the first time and it actually works, right? But I'm going to try it. So I'm going to run it. So I'm going to run the program, and hopefully it runs, and it's going to print far that for me. No, there you go. No, it didn't. Oh, of course, because it's going to say it's not safe and fix it. OK, I'm going to put that thing. Where is the error list? Um, output. We need to define this copy. So let's bring it up here, define. That's one of the. That's one of the bad things about copying stuff, because you never remember what it was. I cannot type it again. I have to always go copy it. But anyways, so if I run it again, control F5, it runs and it prints Farda. Yay! OK? So I set a string, and I don't care what is the size. I didn't need to worry about how many characters it is when I'm looking at the main. Of course, behind the scene, I'm doing all that. What is wrong with this code if you have studied dynamic memory allocation? I'm not deleting it. I just had seven bytes memory leak. I occupied space, and I did not delete it. Bad boy I am. So I have to do it. So I have to actually say, where is it? I have to say, Void, what should I call it? Clear memory or dialog or crea uh, clear memory. OK? So to clear memory. And I, have, I made some other mistake too that I have to tell you. It's not a mistake. I haven't taught it yet, but you'll see what I mean. So void string clear memory. And in that clear memory thingy, what I need to do is this. I need to uh, delete exactly how I allocate it. Because I use square bracket to allocate, I use square bracket to delete. S delete M data. But again, remember, as soon as you delete, that's another golden rule. You always set it to null pointer. And I'm going to set size to 0. OK? Are we okay with this? Yes. How is that a function that creates a new, uh, new memory? And then, you know? Yeah, but, but it's got to be a, uh, well, there are ways. Oh, wait, wait, baby steps. I'm going to go, th I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get there. Are we okay down to here? Now, the next thing we need to see over here, so what happens if I, so I have clear memory here now. No, I'm going to say print. And in here, I'm going to say name dot clear memory. So I cleared the memory. And, and I'm going to say name dot print again out of curiosity, curiosity to see what happens when I clear the name. An empty string, what happens if I just print an empty string? A string is just, just empty. This is what happens. X, you see that? It means it failed. That, if, if it was on Linux, you would have gotten segmentation fault. OK? Or null pointer assignment in this case. My print wasn't intelligent enough. In my print, I should have said if m data printed. Now, if you want to write a kindergarten version, you can say not equal null pointer. But if you knew your IPC well enough, you know that you didn't need to do that because zero means false. Anything but zero is true. So you could have just said if m data, which is the right way to do it. So I'm going to just comment this and put that one out for those people who want to be real C programmers and not just pass it and get the mark. So a real C programmer really writes, writes that, like and the codes that you follow, this is what you're going to see. If m data, they know. If it's not null, then do it. OK? So now if I run it. I'm going to exit with code 0, which means everything's good. OK? So I actually said so the second one is printed, and you, need, you see nothing. So essentially, printing nothing in here means success. OK? And now, what happens if I do this? Name.print before setting it. Before setting it to FARDAD, I want to print it. 
That should be an empty name, right? And this is what I get. Another error message. Uh, this one is going to be segmentation fault. Why? Because if I run the program, you will see that it actually comes, and I'm doing step by step. So it created name, came to print, it comes to print, and it wants to print M data. What do we have in M data? Read error. Why? Because it's someone else's memory. I have some address in there that doesn't belong to me. It's some garbage in there. This is a pain. This is no object orientation. It's, I mean, like, what the heck? Every single time I have to remember to set it to null before I do anything? Isn't, is there any way that I can make this thing to get initialized to proper values right when I create it? Yes, there is. And that is called a constructor. A constructor is a procedure. First of all, I want your listening ears on. A constructor is not a function. Was I clear about it? A constructor is not a function. A constructor is just a procedure. It's something you write so it automatically gets called when the object comes to life. You can never call a constructor. Why? Because it's not a function. It looks like a function. It is not. Okay? You cannot explicitly call any function manually. It's like when the baby is born, it comes to life. You cannot, you cannot call that function out of the thing. Certain procedures have to happen for the thing to come out. That's what it is. You, can, you, you, see what, you, you feel what I'm saying? A constructor is a consequence of an object coming to life. It is not a function to be called manually. And see how much stress I'm putting in. And tomorrow in your test, you are going to call it again. OK? Before even telling you how to write it, I'm telling you, constructors cannot be called. All right. How do you write a constructor? To make a constructor extremely distinguishable, they actually, it's, it li it's like a function that you write, but the name of the function is the same as the name of the class. And it has to be public. Otherwise, if it's private, it means never create a string. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. So string, and that's my constructor. OK? No argument constructor, or sometimes it's referred to as a default constructor. OK? So what do I do? I'm going to write over here string, string again. And I write whatever I want to happen when the object comes to life. You follow? So like that, I will write whatever I want to happen when the object comes to life. You cannot call that. OK? You cannot call that. If you write the code to call it, something happens. But it's not calling. I'll tell you later on what it is. We're good down to this point? So this constructor now, what I want to do, I want when nobody says anything that are just creating the string, I want the string to be empty. How do I sh can be sure that it's empty? I'll set m data to null pointer. And I'm going to set the size to 0. And by the way, now that I have the size, let me give some access to the programmers to it. So if, I want to, if they want to see what is the size of my string, all they need to, to do is call the size function. I just added. So I'm going to add over here another one, int string size. And I'm going to say return m size. As you see, these are all normal and easy stuff. Object orientation is like this. You don't have a big code with extremely awkward logic coming out. Usually, you have small functions that do little things. It's like making a wall. You have small bricks. You put it back to back, little by little, and then you have the China wall. OK, they're all small bricks, but it makes big things. That's what object orientation is. OK, we want to appreciate that. So there is something that I have to tell you over here. Usually, they let it stay and talk about it later, but I don't do that. I like to talk about it now. 
What is this const that I'm putting in here? Can anybody tell me? Why do I put that const over there? I need a victim or I'm going to pick one. Because the string is not modified. It's a constant string. It has a it's the other way. So that nobody can modify the string Thank once you. it's made. So that we don't change it. Not that it's, it is. So that we don't change it. If you want to set something, if I want to say, what time is it? You say 1042. That's asking you shouldn't change the time of your watch. Right? If I told you what is your name, you say Jack, that shouldn't make your name Jill. When you get something from someone to set something, those things don't change. You follow? That's why we have that const over there. Now, we need to set that emphasis over there to protect us from the most evil person in programming. You know who's that? Yourself. Not to shoot yourself in the foot. We have to do that. How? Whenever you are writing a logic, what are the methods? What is a method? What is a method? What is a method? Function. What kind of function? Uh, what is a method? Shay, what is a method? <laughs> oh. I know. I want, who said he knows? OK, what's the method? <laughs> I, wish I, had, I, I wish I had video, too, so I could put your shame on YouTube. Shame. What is a method? Anyone? It's a member function, for heaven's sake. I told you right at the beginning of the thing, I say either you call it member function, but in object-oriented terminology, it's called a method. What do we call a member variable? An attribute. Thank you very much. So remember these things, please. OK? So these functions that we write, the member functions, the methods, are the ones who are responsible to give us access to the guts of our, of our class. That's what we call encapsulation. That's, that's me asking you for 25 cents instead of putting my, pocket in your, my hand in your pocket and pick 25 cents. That's the difference. It's like a guest coming to your house or a thief comes to your house. That's the difference. A guest comes, knock the door, you welcome, you come in. Thief, you don't know. It's the guest, but comes with, I don't know, through the window. That's what it is. So that's the difference. So we have to enforce it. Immediately when you are writing something, look at the logic of the function and think. Question, set. Should set change my class inside the class? Should the set change anything in guts of my class? Of course, I'm setting it. I am setting my class who did not have anything to far that. So it should, correct? Print, should it change anything in my class? No, because it's printing it. It's not supposed to change it. How about clear memory? Should it change my class? Yes, because I'm clearing the memory. Size, should it change my class? No, because it's telling me what the size is. Now, so we have something that we can tag those functions with. So in the body of the function, compiler enforces that fact for you. Now, if I want a function, a member function, a method, not to change the owner, the guts of the class, this is what I do. So I don't want print to change it, so I'll put const over here. I don't want the size to change it, I put const over here. So when you're actually writing it, it becomes size const and print const. The difference is that if by mistake in here I write m size is set to 33, it's going to give me an error telling me, hey, what the heck you're doing? Expression must be a modifiable value. You cannot change anything in a class in this function. This function is constant. Remember, although the functions work, and that's the worst thing that a student can, can come and tell me, and they come and tell me, they run the program, say, what the heck is this thing that you wrote? They say, but it works. But it works is not the same thing, okay? It has to work properly. That's what object orientation is. 
All right? So remember, always, always, always think about the logic. Will this method change my class? If the answer is no, you have to put const over there. Later on, you'll find out that if you don't, then your program is going to be faulty. Okay? We're okay down to here? Now, next thing. So now it's beautiful. Now if I actually run my program, where is it? Now if I run my program, it's not going to crash. It's just not going to print anything because the first one is an empty thing. So essentially it's going to just say far that. When the class gets created, let's ch check it out. I'm going to actually walk through it. Okay, let's go step by step. So as soon as name wants to come to life, see what happens. It goes to the constructors, set the data to null pointer. Should I be worried? Am I causing memory leak? No. The class is coming to life. The object name is coming to life. Therefore, all the variables are supposed to be null and nothing because it's nothing. It started from nothing. So then it's going to set that one to null pointer. It's going to set the size to zero and good. Now I'll come over here. I'm going to set it to Fardad. When I'm set it to Fardad, then it comes over here, measures the size of Fardad. It sees it's six. Then it says allocate six plus one memory. That is seven. Copy Fardad to mdata. Now mdata is a dynamically allocated thing with Fardad in it. Now it goes out, prints Fardad. Clears the memory, it comes over here, deletes the data, sets it to null, sets the size to zero, comes out, tries to print it again, but because m data is null, nothing's going to get printed, and only one far that is there, life is beautiful. But still, this is painful, because I know that I'm going to forget to clear the memory sometimes. And you don't always know when your function is coming, your class is coming or going. I wish I had something like the constructor, but exact opposite, which means it could have been called when the object is dying automatically, so I should not worry about it. We do, and that is called a destructor, or correct English is deconstructor, but hey, destructor is a common mistake that everybody says. Destructor it is. So it's a destructor. It's something that destroys your class, which means Anything you want to take care of before the object goes out of memory, you do it in that one. So, what do I do? How do you write the destructor? It's exactly like a default constructor, but the difference is that you just put a little tilde in front of it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a destructor. Okay? Was it that hard? I mean, you literally... <laughs> It's just the tilde. <laughs> okay, so that's what you do. So you write that to clean things up after yourself, and that's a destructor. So I simply write the almost the same code. So copy. Instead of a constructor, that's a destructor. And what do I do in here? I reuse code. I'm not going to rewrite again. What do I do? I write clear memory. Right? Clear memory did that, right? So now I don't need to worry about it. I can actually get rid of that. And it's going to clear it for me automatically at the end. I don't need to worry about it. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. What did I do? Control Z. Here. I don't need to clear it. <laughs> That's what I meant. Which means. When I'm actually running this program, okay, when it runs the program, come on, where is it? Okay, it comes to string, goes over here, creates the uh, it makes the string, initializes everything, then goes out, prints nothing because data is null, so nothing gets printed, then sets it to fardat. How does it set it? It comes over here and gets the string, sizes the string, 
adds one to it, allocates memory, copies it, comes over here, now it wants to print it. Now data is actually pointing to something, so it's going to print it, then it comes out, and then it goes, as soon as it goes to the end of the program, it goes to the structure automatically, because the structure automatically is called when any object is going out of its scope, when it dies. And it goes to clear memory, wipes the memory out, and ladies and gentlemen, we have a healthy little string that actually works properly for us now. Yes, sir. It, it automatically goes to the structure when it dies. Whenever it goes out of scope. That was a beautiful question, people. When does something die? Whenever it goes out of a scope, what is a scope? The closed curly bracket in which it started with. The only scopes that are more global are class scopes that you have to be careful about. Over here, M data is not going to go out of scope because the scope is the scope of the class. Okay? M data in here or M size in here, they are not dying in the scope because they, are, they haven't got created in the scope, they were created in a string scope, in a class scope. All right? Are we okay down to here? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? All right. Now, having said all these things, again, set I don't like. I want to be able to do this. String, name two, and I want to be able to say over here, Fred. I want to create and initialize it right at the beginning. I don't want to set it to something. I want to just build it out of what it is. How do I do that? It's exactly the same thing. Constructors, like functions, they can be overloaded. Easy. So instead of actually having a constructor just with no argument, I'm going to create another constructor, string, constant character pointer, string, and I'm going to create it over here. So string, string, const character pointer string. All right, so now I created this. Now I want to allocate. So how about, it's a good idea when I'm in a constructor to wipe everything up, right? So I'm going to simply call the other constructor to delete, to wipe everything up. And then, why nobody objected? Didn't I just tell you I couldn't call a constructor? Didn't I two seconds ago told you you cannot call a constructor two seconds ago? You should have screamed out of your lung. What are you doing? You're calling a constructor. You just told us not to. Yes, you can't. You cannot call a constructor. It looks like you can, but you cannot. Okay? So don't do it. All right? Don't. That's wrong. Okay? Now I'm going to do the dynamic memory allocation and all those good stuff that I wanted to do. So, so first I have to make sure that the streak. So what I'm going to do in here, because people are nuts, sometimes they sent null pointers to, to us. So I have to make sure that the string is actually pointing to something. So I'm going to say if the string actually exists, if it is actually pointing to somewhere, it's not some uh, not case thingy, I'm going to actually do the set thingy. I have written already the code for it, so I'm going to reuse my code. So set it, right? I've written the set function, does the memory, dynamic memory allocation and all the good stuff, right? So I'm just going to set it. And if it's not, then what I'm going to do else, I have to set the function in a, to an empty state, the one that I have done in the constructor, right? So I have to rewrite the code. Essentially, if that's the case, I have to do this again. I have to copy, copy, and paste it in here, correct? Right? But that's a bad thing. Whenever you are copy and pasting code, it means you should have written a function. That's not a good thing to do. 
So I'm going to put all those things in a private function, a function, a method that is not for everyone to use. It's for myself to reuse my code within my class. So in here, I'm going to create something. I'm going to call it void set empty, and I'm going to set it to a safe empty state. It's private. I don't want people to set empty and cause memory leak. So I'm putting it in a private area to make sure that I have access to it because I know what it does. Therefore, I'm going to come over here. And where is it? 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 In here, I'm going to say void string set empty. And now I'm going to copy that code over here. So whenever you have something in a constructor that you want to call, that craves for rather the function to be written. So in here, I'm going to say set empty. And in here, I'm going to say set empty too. As a matter of fact, just to, make sh to, be, to be sure, what I'm going to do, I'm going to set it to empty anyway. So I'm going to say set empty. Just set it to empty and then set it to string or whatever you want. Easy breezy. That's the rule. Remember what I told you? Whenever you are doing dynamic memory allocation, what do you do? You first set it to empty. Make sure that pointers that are not used are set to null. And whenever you delete, you make sure you set the pointers back to null again. That was the rule. Unused pointers are always set to null. Are we OK down to here? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? All right, so we have a huge problem with the design that I just had, but I want to do it after the break because the heavy stuff are coming, okay? So I want you to, to, to really have five minutes break. Don't come over here and say, my account doesn't work. I want you to do stretch, you know, think about other things, okay? Daydream for, for five minutes. I need your attention after this. And remind, okay, so I want to show you something that's going to happen now. So in here, I'm going to say x, y, z. OK, so I created a string x, y, z. OK, then I'm going to print it. Then I'm going to set it to far that and I'm going to print it, OK? And I'm going to run this program now. So x, y, z got printed. Far that got printed, exited with code 0, right? It seems like everything is cheesy and nice and beautiful. It is not, actually. This is what happened. This is what I created. I said string A, X, X, so M data got created, size became three, and it says M size, and it set it to that, correct? Right? Then I call the set. When I call the set, this happens. It allocates memory, sets M data to that one. What happened to the old one? Recording. All right. so, so the old one becomes memory leak. Because I just set the M data to new pointer, right? What happened to the old one? Oops. Boo boo. So we shouldn't do this. That my set causes memory leak. Whenever you want to create new, whenever you want to create new dynamic memory, you have to look to see if the old one is there is pointing to anything or not. And because now we have a constructor, and in our constructor we are following the rule of object being null, I can safely, before setting anything, I can safely say delete m data. Before, or I can simply say clear memory. Let's reuse, reuse code. I can say clear memory. I want to set it. Let me first clear the memory. Why? 
because I don't want it to point to the old one. I don't want memory leak. Now, what happens if, <clears throat> if nothing is created, if my object is empty, if it's already clear? Nothing. When a pointer is null and you delete it, delete knows that it's null. It's, it just ignores it. So you're on the good, on, uh, you're on the clear. So now my set is a correct way of setting. Now it's actually saying, OK, set. Now I'm setting it. And uh, uh, the outcome is exactly the same. So if I actually run it like this, it works the exact same way. But I want you to do something <clears throat> at home, upload these to metrics, remove the clear memory over here, comment this, and run it through Valgrind. You will see that it tells you memory leak. You have these many bytes memory leak. OK? Because you just. You are just pointing to something without removing the destination. You point it to something else, and that's memory leak. Are we OK with this? This is something that I wanted you to really think about. It's a very important thing. Any questions down to here? Suggestions? Objections? Are we OK? Now, this parentheses over here can be written in another way. OK? Initialization at the moment of creation works exactly the same way you initialize something in C language. How do you initialize something in C language? If you have an integer i, what is the code to initialize the thing? What do you do? int i equals something, right? So assignment at the moment of creation is initialization. So remember what I just told you. If this one is identical to this, no difference. It's the same thing as the thing at the top. That, that's no assignment operator. That's initialization. Remember this till the day you die. This is an important, important thing in C++. Assignment at the moment of creation is initialization. It's not assignment. It actually calls a constructor with that argument. OK? Remember that. It calls it with that argument. Are we OK down to here? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? All right. <clears throat> now let's compare two strings to see if I want to compare one string to another, what can I do? Um, also, uh, there is another thing that I wanted to tell you. So what would happen if I I just want to bring something. You see over here, I'm calling it SDR, OK? What would happen if I, for some stupid reason, because I'm nuts, I called that one M data too? What's going to happen? So the name of the argument is M data. The name of the uh, member variable is M data too. How do we distinguish? It, first of all, does that cause an error? The answer is no. Shadowing happens. Remember we were talking about shadowing? When you create the same name for a variable inside the scope, it shadows the other one. So the member data becomes inaccessible. If that's the case, if in any case you want to kind of go outside and come back in and access the guts of a class, even if they are shadowed by something, it's an easy way to do it. We all know what addresses are. OK? Address, we know what they are. Address of something. Address of a class, address. When you are implementing a class inside of the class, there is a default variable 
who has the address of the class that you're in. And you can always access that. That variable name is called this. When you say this, it means the address of the current object. So I could simply do this. I could say, in here I'm going to put mData. But when I'm, let me just put, and this one is mData. So this mData and this mData, they are all the argument, right? This mData and this mData, they are the member variable, correct? So I can simply say this, and you know when you are having a pointer and you want to access the, the, the structure, you use arrow. And I'm going to say this. And now everything is clear. You see that? So using the this pointer, I can access the guts of the, of the class. Okay? I used to, that used to be my style. Okay? And one day, by mistake, I did not put the, this thing. It took me three months to debug the program because it doesn't give you an error. You're simply working on a local variable, and the member variable is not changing. So that's why I started putting M underline. And I said, the heck with it. I'm not going to do that. Any member variable that I have, I'm going to start, start it with something. First, I did underline, and then underline was one of the things that the compiler uses to do its variable name. So I said, the heck with it. I'm going to call it M underline, which means member underline. Okay. Now, some people actually put the class abbreviation. So they put, for string, they put S underline. For employee, they put E underline. Each person has its own thing. For me, it's M underline. Okay? So that's what I did. But I'm going to do leave this on purpose for you just to see that you can use that. Now, you know that target of this becomes the object itself, right? If you want to do that, if you want to say target of this, and you want to access mData, you cannot put a dot in here because dot is much stronger than asterisk. So therefore, this happens first before the asterisk take, if, takes effect. That's why you have to put parentheses around it. So you have to say target of this in parentheses dot data. Okay? So either line 29 or line 30 to use the this pointer to access the current object. You can do that. Very bad style of doing it. I mean, like, yuck. But hey, I'm just going gonna, gonna to put them both for you to know I'm not crazy. Because two days from now, you forget what I said. And you just see the code. And you say, this guy's nuts. So I'm going to put over here SDR and bring my SDR back. OK? SDR. And in here, we don't need this. So this is the same way of writing it. This is like the human beings write it this way. This is not case scenario. So uh, I'm going to comment the human way, and I'm going to leave the not case so we can see what's going on. Don't do that, OK? But that, this thingy comes in handy. Just know what is it for. When the time comes, you'll know when to use it, OK? Remember, you always have access to the object that you're in, OK? <clears throat> I either can go out of this class and say K3010, correct? But if I'm in here, I'm going to say tomorrow I'm going to be in this class, right? So I can refer to the object that I'm in with this. Yes, sir. This is literally the address of the current object. Anything you can do with an address of an object, you can do with that. You can call methods. You can access variables. Anything you can do. You do, you can do it with that. Are we okay down to here? Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? So. OK, that clear memory, I removed it. I should not. OK. 
<clears throat> okay. Let's say I want to compare two strings to see which one comes in first in the dictionary. What is bigger than what? What is smaller than what? So what I'll do in here, I'm going to create a function in my string, and I'm going to call that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a, a, a function in my string and call it greater than. So I'm going to say boolean greater than, all right? And in here, I'm going to put a constant string reference s, and I'm going to pass to it, okay? Are we okay with this? Greater than. And then, let's implement it. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to say, okay, so boolean. I want to see if something is greater than something or not. So in here, I'm going to say string, all right? And I know from string compare, I can do this. I can say string compare, m data of mine. First of all, I have to make sure that nothing is null, right? If something is null, I'm going to return false. You cannot compare nothing to anything. That doesn't make sense. So in here, I'm going to say if, what we can do in here we can either check to see if m data is null, but the problem is that as the object grows bigger and bigger, you keep forgetting about the details of the object, and that's serious. Like when you are creating the object and it becomes a huge thing that you have created, you forget what was the condition of this thing to be empty. If that's the case, again, another way of checking it is a good idea to, to have actually a function called boolean is empty const to actually tell you if it's empty or not. So create that boolean, string is empty, and simply return m data being to null point, being equal to null pointer. Okay, or, uh, or m size being zero. Maybe you have something, but it's nothing. So, so one of these two. So either that is null, or m size is zero, one of these two. If any of these is true, it means it's an empty object, right? Now, any place you want to check to see if it's empty, empty instead of actually thinking about, okay, what is it? If it's that one, if it, you don't need to worry about that. You have written a function that tells you that. So you're going to say, if not is empty, so I'm going to be pessimistic. I'm going to say boolean, result is false something, whatever, if not is empty. Actually, wait a minute. If they are both empty, see, this is something that becomes very difficult to think about strings, what we're going to do. I'm not going to go through the details. I'm just going to make the crappiest code possible. Oops, you too. Okay. <laughs> the worst code possible. And then we're going to fix it later on. So I'm just going to make sure that none of them are empty. I'm just going to say if uh, uh, this is not empty, is not empty, and S is not empty, then I'm going to actually check and compare the two. So what do I do? I'm going to say result becomes string compare of M data of mine and s dot m data being greater than zero. That's the rule for it, right? And I'm going to say return result. I have started writing better code now. Like if it was IPC 144, you would have written, if string compare is greater than zero, result is true. Else, result is false. That's yuck. When you have a condition, condition is being true or false, just keep that condition, right? If Remember, whenever you are writing an if condition and you are setting the variable to true and false using your if condition, you don't need an if condition. The condition itself is your friend, right? So that's what I'm doing in here. So I'm saying greater than result. So what happens over here, now I can actually check two things to see which comes first, which comes next. So in here, if I have string A like that and I have string B being far add, Yeah, 
B, okay, B, and I'm going to say B dot set farad and B print. So I'm printing A, I'm printing B. I'm going to say if A dot greater than B, then I'm going to say uh, A dot print. Let me go to new line over here, C out and L. N and L. Oh. And we need IO stream for that. And therefore, we need STD using. All right. So C out and L. So I'm going to say print, A print, and I'm going to say C out is greater. Okay? Actually, else, B dot print is greater. Okay, so now if I run the program, essentially what it does, it goes through, did I set the other one to far that? I think I did, right? So it's going to essentially say x, y, z is greater because x, y, z, x comes after f, right? So x is greater than, are we okay with this? All right, so, so. Now I want you to pay attention to what I'm going to do. Okay, I want you to pay attention to what I'm going to do. I want your undivided attention on this. You see this, everybody understood what happened with this A greater than B thingy that I have written? Are we okay with that? Now I'm going to rename this function. Just take a look. I'm going to say operator greater than. Did I do anything? No, I just renamed it. Nothing has changed. And I'm going to go over here and change that one too. Actually, I should have uh, made, put a const over here. I forgot I'm going to put it because it's not changing anything, right? Const. Yeah. So, so now I wrote, so in here, what do I call? Instead of greater than, I'm going to say operator greater than. Are we okay with this? I'm going to run the program. I just renamed the, 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 the name of the function. Nothing specific happened, works exactly the same way. Let's walk through it. Let's walk through it. I'm going to come over here. So it starts, sets that one XYZ, sets B to FARDAD, prints them both, so XYZ and FARDAD are printed. Then it's going to come to the operator, goes to operator plus, uh, operator uh, greater than, Set the result, make sure they're not empty, compares, the result becomes true, then it goes over here, says A dot print, essentially X, Y, Z, and then it's going to say is greater, and it's going to say is greater. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Anybody over here at this moment had any problem with what I just wrote? I just renamed the name of the function. Are we okay? Now, the good news is that any function that you call that way can be called in two different ways. I can call it either like that, or I can use its operator version. Ta-da! Any, so I, I didn't change anything. Don't get scared. I didn't change it. I called the function operator greater than. And I just called it, called it for you right in front of your eyes. It called the function. I'm just telling you, when an operator stands between two objects that is not defined in the language's library, a string that I just created, greater than sign, there is no such thing. If I say employee greater than five, that 
That, does not, that is not defined. As soon as something like that happens, compiler checks for line 14 to see if it exists or not. If you say A greater than B, compiler checks to see if the class of A has an operator greater than that accepts a B. If that's the case, it's going to call it. Let's check it out. I'm just going to run it again. So it's going to start and comes over here. OK? Right? Set? Far that? Correct? Now it comes over here. Now it reaches over here. See where it jumps. Take a look. Whoops, went to the operator. If you look at S, S has far that in it. And if you look at this that we have over here, that has X, Y, Z. And it is the exact same thing, and it returns the result that is true. So if the value becomes true, and it's going to print X, Y, Z is greater. Exactly as I mentioned. You see that? Are we okay? Not only that, just take a look at this. Let me just make another change. We've already done this. Didn't we create a set? Right? Take a look at this. Let me just comment it so you see it's there. That set function, I'm going to change it to operator assignment. And I'm going to go over here, have the set that I had. and change it to operator assignment. Now, I don't need to write a set anymore. I just write that. Of course, I, have, I could have called it like this too. I could say B dot operator assignment, and I would write over here for that. I could have done that. Same thing. But I'm going to call the operator. Now you understand what I said, assignment at the moment of creation is not assignment. Because B is not at the moment of creation now. Line 7, that is not assignment. Assignment at the moment of creation is the constructor. But assignment, halfway through the thing, after the object is alive, it's the operator. So now what happens? If I run the program, Again, I change nothing. It's the exact same program I had before. If I run the program, as soon as it gets to this point, oh, it gives me error. What is the error? Set is not found. Did I use set anywhere else? Oh, yes. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Set. You see that? I, I re so what do I do with that? Just call the function. Operator assignment. There you go. It's the same thing as set. Yes. The first time that I saw this, I burst in tears. What do you mean? Instead of writing set, you're writing assignment. Don't you feel like, you're like, oh, you want to run out and make it out of thing? You know what I mean? Like the, the Archimedes <laughs> found the answer of the. It's, it's an amazing thing. You just overloaded the assignment operator, which means your code becomes more natural. Uh, it comes out of functional thing, a functional program as you call functions to do this. It actually becomes like normal assignment that you're used to. B is set to far that. Why do you have to say dot set? You follow what I'm saying? Which one you prefer to use? A dot set B or just say A is equal to far that? That's what we do all our lives. That's what we like. And it has lots of benefits that we're going to soon get, get at it. OK? Operator overloading is really good for your health. Trust me. Yes? Yeah. Operators, that's the syntax for it. So and remember, important thing, important thing. What did I do? It was operator overloading. Remember that? Function overloading. What did it mean? It means you had a function, you overloaded it to something else. You cannot say, I overloaded the print function, and you never had a print function. It's impossible. To overload something, it must already exist. Are we clear on this? So you cannot make up your own operator. 
You cannot create operator schmigglidingi. You can't do that. It has to already exist. So all the operators that are within the language, you can apply it to different things. And especially for strings, it comes so handy. Like you want to concatenate one string to another. Instead of concat, you do plus equal. Plus equal adds one to another, right? We're going to do it in two seconds now. Okay? So that's the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to do operator plus equal to actually resize something. So we are okay down to here? And I want you to go home. Two seconds. I want you to go home. Bring this thing up with F10 and F11. Go through every single level of execution. Try to break the code. This is not perfect. It needs lots of other things called copy constructor and all the things that we need. it needs to have that I did not set. If you pass it through argument, it's going to crash. I want you to find out how it crashes. So the next time you come, I talk about copy constructors, you understand the need for it. OK? Um, we'll see. But anyways, go home and try to walk through it, see how things work. So uh, somebody had a question? Yes. X is a variable, right? It, it acts like an object, actually, not a variable. It's actually an object that actually it doesn't act like a variable. We make it look like a variable, but it's not. That's polymorphism to the bone. Right? Assignment, you use it with an integer, it sets the integer to a value. I just made assignment to work for my string to set it to whatever I want. Instead of using string copy, now I'm simply creating a string, set it to whatever I want. OK? So all right. Uh, what else I wanted to do now? Mm. Yeah, like you can do many different things. Like, is empty. You see, is empty. You can actually do something like you put not in front of something. It means it's bad, not something. Okay, you can actually do that. Operator not, and if it's empty, you return true. So you can say if not a, it means if a is bad. <laughs> do, you can do all these things. There's no there. There sky is the limit. You can if if you are comfortable with your set, if you're comfortable with your set, usually when somebody overload something, instead of just writing an operator equal, what they do, they let the set be, they let the set be, and I'm going to do it now, so they let the set be, so you have your set function, but then you add <coughs> your operator equal. And then you simply call the set in here. It's not redundant. It's calling it in two different ways. It kind of bloats the class, I understand. But you want to be able to set for the person who wants to set. You just want to be, why? I like set. So you can use set or assignment operator, whichever you want. You can do that. It works both ways now. We don't have to call the operator. No, you can actually. You can actually, uh, uh, co uh, yeah, you can actually uh, call the set. You can call the operator. You can call the set. You can use the operator format. You can, you can do it many other, dif many different ways. Yes. You can't. If you don't have it, compiler is going to tell you such a thing doesn't exist. You can't do that. You can't do that. If I, if I just say over here like this, just imagine if I do this. If Let's say I do this. I'm going to say over here, I'm going to say over here, B is set to 23. Nothing's going to happen. It's going to tell you bad thing it is there. If I want that thing to work, I have to create an assignment operator that accepts an integer. And then convert that integer to a string and put it in a string, which is a very good thing. Try see if you can do it. That's your challenge thing. 
overload the assignment operator for an integer. So when you say b is set to 23 integer, it puts 2, 3, null inside the string. If you can do that, you have big bonus from me. That's actually yeah, not an easy thing to do. See if you can do it. And don't Google it. <laughs> Try to do it yourself. So if you can make this happen, so I'm going to say make this happen for bonus. Make this happen for bonus. So I'll give you some bonus mark for test or something, or if you miss the workshop, I'll, I'll do something about it. OK, try to do that. Make this happen. So actually, when I do this, afterwards I print b, it's going to print 23 for me. Not 23, 2, 3. It becomes a string. It converts a, a, an integer to a string. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, class ends at uh, 35 or 30? 30. 30. Six minutes I have, right? Yes, six minutes I have. <laughs> yes. So you said uh, we should try and do that. If I'm not mistaken, is it not casting? No. If it was, I wouldn't give any bonus mark for it. OK. <laughs> Casting is a completely different thing. And that's th good. Go cast it, and it's going to crash your computer, and you'll see what happens. So um, uh, I want to see which topic I can go next. We are actually in week five now. You know that, right? So week four is done. We are in week five now. Um, let me do the plus equal. So we, have, we, we exercise a little, bit a little bit more in dynamic memory allocation. We'll do the rest of the operators later. OK? So <clears throat> plus equal. How can I do plus equal to actually add something to the, to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, to the string? <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, Oh, another thing. Oh, 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 before doing that. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Something very important. Can I do this? Obviously not because it gave me an error. <laughs> I can't do this, right? Well, we can do that in C. Huh? It's, huh? No, it's not going to work. Because what happens over here is this. First, B is set to far that it's going to get called, right? That's going to call this function, correct? Line 42. What is it returning? You cannot say C is equal to void, right? So what I need to do to make this work is to actually send the object out. And that's when that this thingy comes handy. In here, I can return a reference. String reference, and in here I'm, I'm going to make it a string reference. And I'm going to say, didn't I? Oh, wrong place, wrong place, wrong place. String reference, OK? And in here I'm going to say, return. Who am I returning? Who should I return? I am in. I am in B. If I want to return B inside this equal operator, what is B? B is the, this object, right? So now I can say return target of this. Return me out. Now, that works perfectly. Now C is far out too. OK? So now let's do the plus equal. I have three minutes to do it. Three minutes to do it. Can I do it? I don't think I can, but let's try. <clears throat> I'll start it. You finish it. So again, string. First of all, I'm going to return a reference of whatever it is. Now I know returning a reference is good. Operator plus equal. And at right side, I'm receiving another string. I want to connect one string to another. So I'm going to receive a constant string, string. Reference, and that's right operand. Now I'm going to put RO over there to remember it's right operand. Now what do I need to do? I'll come over here, and I'm going to put this thing as a member of string.
Now, I need to know, I have to resize the, 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 the string, right? I have to add something to the end of it. So I need to allocate a bigger string to put them both in there. So first what I need to do, I need to have a character pointer temporary place and set it to new character. But what size? The size of me, m size, plus the size of the right operator, plus one for null termination. Correct? Then I have to say copy into the temp my data, correct? So my data got copied into temp, right? And now what I need to do is to concatenate the second one to the end of this one. Now I'm going to say SDR cat to the end of temp the data of the other guy. Write operands m data. Now that I have the temp as concatenated value of both of them, I can get rid of what I have now. Now I'm going to say clear memory. So delete my memory. Now that my memory is deleted, I'm going to say m data, my data, should point where temp is pointing. As easy as that. And my size before doing that, oh, that clear memory is not a good thing because it sets the size to null. So I'm just going to say delete. M data to get rid of M data, and I'm going to say M size plus equal add to the M size the size of right operators size, and return this, and I'm done. I don't know. Oh, there you go, and return this. And ladies and gentlemen, I just created plus equal. Walk through that one. So in here, I can actually say, so B was farted, right? B was farted. I can set C. So I can say, uh, set C to Soleil with a space at the beginning. X, and then I can say B plus equals C. Now I can say B the print, and it's going to say far that Soleil. And that shows that I cannot type my last name, right? Pardon me? Line what? Line 30. 13. Yeah, I know. That C thing, it was just for a test. It doesn't matter. It overwrites it. Who cares? Okay? So C is overwritten by Soleil over here. So Soleil, and then B is far that. So B plus equals C. Hopefully at the end, I'm going to print. Uh, when I print the B, it's going to be far that Soleil. Three years later, four years later, five years later, and it crashed. Which means I did something wrong. I have to find out what. That happens with dynamic memory allocation when you do not draw. Okay, I thought I did it right. That's actually a perfect example. I, the prof, with 30 years writing C++ program, screwed it up that easily. I gotta find out what it is and then post it. I'm gonna go and do it in the office. But something went wrong over there, I don't know what. So temp is the size. I'll find out what's wrong with it. You have to just draw and find out. But anyways, the logic is sound. Something is boo-boo in, in the middle. I'll fix that one and I'll put it up for you so you'll see what's going on. Anyways, have a beautiful day.